Hey everyone and welcome to another video. So as I already said, there was going to be a demo for Outward uh, at PAX in Boston and I really wanted to go but unfortunately I live on a different continent so that was kind of a problem. But fortunately some people did go there and were able to play the demo for Outward 2. And so they thankfully uh, shared the information, especially on Reddit, where I have this uh, post in front of me about whatever uh, they felt, and we're going to read it together. Uh, thank you very much, Oak Wooden, whoever you are, for sharing this information with you, with us. Um, there is just one thing I want to point out quickly, is that we do have some more footage for Outward too, that comes from a video from IGN. Um, however, uh, not, I don't want, I don't usually do this, I don't want to antagonize anyone, but um, I think that this video is not very objective and not very interesting. It's, it's a very, it's a very clumsy video and, and it goes uh, everywhere. It's, it's, I, I don't, I just don't feel like it's a very fair video, especially to the devs for out of two. Uh, go watch it if you want to have it, but I just want to point out that some of the footage I'm going to use to illustrate uh, what I'm talking about here uh, comes from the IGN, uh, the IGN video. Um, so first of all, in this Reddit post, he starts by t t uh, saying that, uh, well, it's, it's very early in development. It's something that we expected. I have probably have some nuance to add to that. They said that it was uh, early in development, but um, they also, uh, Guillaume also said in the live stream that they had changed from uh, I, un, Unity to Unreal Engine and that whatever they were showing at PAX and in the trailer was everything they had managed to um, convert from uh, Unity to Unreal Engine. So there's obviously way more elements in the game already than what there was at PAX. And um, so he says there's uh, some things that uh, are bound to change like Bandages instantly restoring health, water skins instantly restoring stamina and having no charges, Gabri's granting health regeneration. So this is definitely things that are going to change and it's not especially um, uh, interesting. Um, so he says the demo took place in the Badlands style and we're gonna have some images to illustrate that. So what, what we get from the demo uh, says and the IGN video too, is that basically it is more of a, as he said, proof of concept a combat demo where you basically explore uh, one dungeon in the game uh, that is going to be a dungeon as i said uh, i think this desert area is some part of uh, the region surrounding haboop haboop but uh, there we go so he says there, this in the post the gameplay consisted of exploring an area roughly the size of a small outward one dungeon uh, maybe the size of a ghost pass looting fighting exploring Wander long enough and you find her Hive Lord sending guard over the end of a demo. So it's basically, it's mostly going to be uh, combat and base mechanics. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about the graphics, but he says the games look amazing. And and I I agree, even with the small images I've, I've seen, it looks splendid. And I think uh, that's something he says, cloaks, swishes and limps bob. Uh, the cloth physics is going to be amazing in, in Outer 2 from what I can see and I think it's it's a basic thing that gives a lot of life to whatever um, whatever you are um, uh, playing. So a bit more interesting about the controls. So attack and special attack on our main hand A and offhand X. Use special attack use special attacks by holding the attack input. Uh, crouch okay uh, crouch and stealth is bound to L3. So I play on, on, on mouse and keyboard, so this does not mean much to me. I'm, I'm going to re rebound all of this very quickly. Dodge is now bound to B. Most interestingly, you now have a Bloodborne-esque quick step with a single input and the traditional dodge roll with a double tap. The quick step does not appear to be Im impeded by wearing a backpack, though I couldn't test it. A test if the quick step has any iframe. I assume it does not. The classic roll is still chunky while wearing the pack. So that um, is something I pointed out in the trailer because we do not see any dodge roll in the trailer and we only see um, 
we only see some uh, uh, some quick steps and uh, what I said in my original video is that I thought they had completely replaced the dodge roll by quick step but it is even more interesting than this since we are going to have both one of them probably to like in to reposition yourself and try to with a quick step and whenever you still have a backpack equipped and the dodge roll in which is going to be classic with uh, iframes to dodge some probably harder to avoid attacks. I had access to three abilities in the demo, fire sigil, cost of fire stone. Yeah, the fire sigil and the spark are, well, spells that are already in Outward 1. They look fantastic. Like, if you look at what IGN showed us, uh, they look very, very good. And, um, and uh, we have some new icons too. Um, and this is something, the last paragraph is a bit more interesting. A charging attack that causes your character to psych up, run forward, and attack the first enemy you get close to. High startup that covers up a lot of ground and deals substantial impact. If you use this ability within a fire sigil, you will catch on fire and the attack will cause a fire explosion that is, deals AoE damage and impact. And the interesting thing is, as you can see on the screen right now, we actually see this in the IGN video. And it looks very interesting. Once again, that's one of the most interesting thing with Outwards Magic is that everything is shamanic, ritualistic. You need to combine things. Most spells don't do much on their own. And it's interesting to see that they probably have added way more combinations than what there was before. And this charge is a completely new skill in itself. Combat and weapons. The feel of, outward, of combat is outward but noticeably better. The flow of playing safe to get stability down and then pressing your advantage hard at the right time is still there and feels as rewarding as ever. The addition of a quick step makes it much easier to reposition around enemies and feels like it might fill the role that quick burst of speed from the run button in, in Outward 1. Like, that's one thing with Outward is that in the first game you were able to dodge most uh, things in the game by running around. You didn't even need to dodge for most of the for most of the enemy attacks. That was completely optional most of the time, uh, which is quite interesting. But now we're going to have the quick step to do this, which, by the way, is Skuma uh, kept arguing that um, this made uh, mercenary one of the most powerful uh, skill trees in the game since it made you able to run more. Uh, so very interesting and I I must admit that personally I think quick steps look so much more realistic than a dodge roll and that's why I love these kind of animations so much. Dual wielding is awesome and this they they quite they emphasized dual wielding a lot in the trailers so I I'm quite confident this is going to be a very interesting feature. Dual wielding is awesome and now seems to allow for much more freedom in equipment setups. For example, you choose which hand to equip when handed items in. In addition to what you'd expect, daggers and lanterns could be equipped in the main hand while swords and hammers could go in the off hand. You can alternate attacks between main and off hand seamlessly, allowing a lot of flexibility in creating custom attacks, attack strings. This could be really useful to apply two different debuffs from your loadout. So that's one thing with dual wielding in Outward 1, currently. It is that, uh, well, offhand n required you to use a skill, not to simply use uh, an attack button, which is going to be different in Outward 2. That meant that since skills uh, did not chain up very well with basic attacks in Outward 1, you had this very annoying thing that uh, when, we, when you were trying to use a skill and your attack animation was not completely finished in Outward 1, you would have this message, um, you cannot do this now, spammed at the bottom of your screen on the left, which is going to um, be probably quite different in Outward 2 since they aim to make everything more fluid. Um, at dagger as a 2 free move normal combo with the first attack of a chain reminiscent of a dagger slash with dagger slash was the skill from uh, outward one shield attack do little damage but had insane impact damage this is going to be a classic not too surprising shield special was a short charge with a two head bash that put a, that put a big pig enemy which is the, the kind of boar orange boar we saw in the trailers into 40% stability immediately 
quite interesting. The torch has two hit normal combo. Okay, they gave some attacks to the torch. The lantern has no attacks, but it was to be expected. The special attack for each light lights and douses them as opposed to the d-pad and put them out with one. Yeah, okay, I just think that um, uh, this is, yeah, you know, in uh, in the trailer we saw what kind of an attack that increases the amount of light to blind enemies. This is probably linked to that. Not sure about it, though. I think the main takeaway here is offhand weapons are going to be way more interesting to play with. Many offhand skills like Shield Bash and Dagger Slash have been incorporated into this weapon's moveset, which is great. Though I wonder how guns are going to work in Outward 2. We'll have to see about that. Spear is my weapon of choice, which is mine too, in Outward 1 and felt great. All two-handed weapons get extra attacks on the offhand attack button. The often normal attack is an extremely useful retreating stab that which we used to get already on some of the combos that can chain repeatedly from safe damage on an advancing enemy. The offhand weapon is a close range sweep. Uh, I remember him saying something different. Where is it? There was something about two handed. But he said something uh, about um, offhand button on two handed weapons. Uh, giving more uh, moves to two-handed weapons. I don't remember where I saw that, but uh, I think there's something like this. UI. Uh, there are now 16 action bar slots with the eight new slots coming from shoulder buttons to the pad. These are really great slots to put items or boons in. So if you look at the IGN video, it shows the quick slots slashed into two things. Uh, which uh, on in terms of UI, this might change obviously, but it's it's interesting. The inter inventory menus look familiar with a fancy new coat of paint. Menu navigation was done via control stick, controlled mouse cursor. This is a departure from Outward One's inventory control, but it may only be because it is early in development. We can see some images in this in the IGN uh, clip. The crafting menu was organized differently from the first game, most notably that recipes. Recipes were organized in a grid like items in the inventory rather than a linear list. It was easier to see many recipes at the same time. The UI had a mysterious six, flo six slot, four slot input and one output, but looked like it maybe had something to do with liquid. Okay. Oil was craftable with water and a mushroom not seen in other one. Okay, cool. I overheard staff talking about how one area has players dealing with a dangerous pollen in the air. Not surprising. Uh, since, well, they seem to have improved everything surrounding the hive enemies. Staff mentioned there will be areas that are a little bit more fantastical and more colorful than in Outward 1, which is something we definitely see in the trailer with this uh, mushroom underground area. Uh, so he said, this guy says, so Oakenwood, thank you very much, for, uh, the Oakwooden, sorry, thank you very much for sharing this information with everyone. Uh, I want to give you credit. Thank you very much for this. You are really helping all of those who unfortunately were not able to go to Boston to go play the demo. Um, this is very useful information. I will try to illustrate all of this with some clips from the new footage we got from the IGN video. Uh, so he played 45 minutes and uh, that's all I have for you today. I will probably discuss a few more things. Uh, I have some more videos coming and uh, I just want to end this video by announcing that I have finally got a PC. Uh, I have a new brand new PC that is going to allow me uh, to well make videos about some games I couldn't make videos on because the graphical quality was way too bad for me to actually feature them on the channel. There's probably some enshrouded coming. There's a new update. I will make a review of Dragon's Dogma 2. Uh, the game has been quite controversial from the start. And obviously everything surrounding uh, Witherbloom and, um, and Outward 2 is going to uh, be there on this channel. Thank you very much for watching. I hope to come back to you with even more information. And I, I think a lot of you are probably as hyped as I am. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.